Welcome back to our lecture series on advanced hydraulics. We are in the fourth module on hydraulic jumps. If you recall, hydraulic jump means it is a type of rapidly varying flow where the depth of flow suddenly increases from a low depth to a greater depth. These things we had discussed it in the last class. In the last class, we had generally discussed on the theoretical aspects of the hydraulic jump. What are the various theories coming into picture? For example, we use the Reynolds transport theorem principle to evaluate the continuity and momentum principles for hydraulic jump. So, if you take the location of hydraulic jump in a control volume, how you can use the principles, continuity principle as well as momentum principles using the Reynolds transport theorem. If you recall them, in the from the continuity principle, we had easily arrived at this particular relationship that suggests that the discharge is same at upstream, that is post pre jump section as well as the post jump section, the discharge will be same. From the momentum principle, we had observed that the specific force at the upstream and downstream of a jump are same, that is in the jump, this is the upstream section, this is the downstream section y 1, y 2. So, the specific force at this downstream uh, upstream section as well as at this downstream section both are same. So, the relationship of the specific force was given as such a 1 h 1 bar plus q squared by g a 1 is equal to a 2 h 2 bar plus q squared by g a 2 where h 1 bar is the depth to the centroid in section 1, that is in the upstream section, depth to the centroid. Similarly, h 2 bar is also the depth to the centroid in section 2. Uh, we had discussed briefly on the rectangular channels, how the gems how you can analyze jumps in rectangular channels. In fact, we will be continuing with that portion today also. We have also studied the US reclamation bureaus uh, mentioning about the types of jumps according to the fraud number. So, today we will be going through the characteristics of jumps in rectangular channels. So, the rectangular channel whichever section you take You can draw the two sections that is one pre jump section and this is post jump section. So, jump means rise in water. So, here let us assume that the depth of water is y 1, here let us assume that the depth of water it is y 2, y 2 greater than y 1 we have to analyze the characteristics now for the rectangular channel. So, what are the properties? You know the specific force at the pre jump section as well as at the post jump section both are same that is a 1 h 1 bar plus q square by g a 1 is equal to a 2 h 2 bar plus q squared by g a 2. Now, for the rectangular channel section you know a 1 is equal to b y 1, a 2 is equal to b y 2, where b is the width of the channel that will be same at the upstream and downstream sections of the jump then h 1 bar for the rectangular channel is nothing but y 1 by 2, h 2 bar is equal to y 2 by 2. So, incorporating all this relationship, what will we get? We will get the following relationship now b y 1 squared by 2 plus q squared by g 
v y 1 this is equal to v y 2 squared by 2 plus q squared by g v y 2. Let us continue the simplifications. I am just taking b out now that is b times y 1 squared by 2 plus q squared by g b square yes this q square g y 1. This quantity is equal to in the right hand side b times y 2 squared by 2 plus q squared by g b squared y 2. So, you can cancel off b now in this portions appropriately you can cancel off. Also q by b the quantity q by b in a rectangular channel section say a rectangular channel section is carrying some discharge right. So, this q by b quantity it is a property of the channel now q by b is equal to discharge per unit width of the rectangular channel. So, for a rectangular channel it is a property you can just define this quantity as a small q. So, that we can use it in our equations and all. So, this entire equation will now become y 1 squared by 2 plus q squared by g y 1 is equal to y 2 squared by 2 plus q squared by g y 2 or you will get a relationship for q small q as follows q squared by g into 1 by y 1 minus 1 by y 2 that is we are taking it into the left hand side these quantities you are taking it into the right hand side y 2 squared minus y 1 square. Continue the real you can see that there are some common terms and all here you will see this quantity becomes q square by g into y 2 minus y 1 by y 1 y 2 is equal to half of y 2 squared minus y 1 squared. So, you know from your mathematics a square any two variables a and b a square minus b square is equal to a minus b into a plus b right. The same principles you are applying logic you are applying you are further simplifying the things you will get q squared by g this is equal to half of y 1 y 2 into y 1 plus y 2 like this I will get a relationship. So, let me call this as equation 1. So, in you may be using them for many analysis today right. So, this relationship that is the discharge per unit width of the channel you are now relating it with the pre and post jump uh, post jump depths depths of water like that you are able to now correlate it. Just for your benefit we can just uh, if you recall in the rectangular channel section we had come up with a representation according to the upstream, upstream fluid number we have came up with a relationship for the rectangular channel we will see how it is arriving at now. The same uh, equation now we are going to rearrange it that is y 1 into y 2 plus y 1 plus y 2 this is nothing but equal to twice q square by g that is y 1 squared y 2 
प्लस y1 y2 square minus twice q squared by g equal to 0. It is a quadratic form. You can represent the quadratic form either in terms of y1 or y2 as y2 is the unknown term in most of the cases. We do not know what is the post jump depth because pre jump depth we already have. It is v who is releasing the water either from Slewis Gay or it is v who is allowing the spillway flow and all in the over the spillways and all. So, we know the pre jump depth mostly. So, we want to identify the post jump depth. So, based on those manipulations, let me suggest this as now a quadratic form means a quadratic equation in terms of y 2 or the post jump depth. So, this can be now rearranged as y 1 y 2 plus y 2 square minus 2 q square by g y 1 equal to 0. That is I just divided it by y 1 or y 2 square plus y 1 times y 2 minus 2 q square by g y 1 equal to 0 you use your mathematics uh, principles and all. So, you will get the solution for this quadratic equation y 2 is nothing but equal to minus y 1 plus or minus y 1 times root of see 1 plus 8 q square by g y 1 q by 2 like this. this portion can be written from that I will be getting it in the following form I can write it easily in this form. Recall the fruit number. So, fruit number in the upstream F r 1 we gave it as V 1 squared by G y 1 is not it. This is nothing but now q squared by g y 1 q, because you know that is the flow per unit width uh, uh, discharge per unit width q is nothing but equal to v 1 into y 1. This is again e nothing but equal to v 2 into y 2. So, the same quantities will be using it. So, I am writing the fruit number in terms of discharge per unit width q squared by g y 1 q. So, therefore, the above equation this particular equation this particular equation this becomes y 2 by y 1 is equal to half times minus 1 plus or minus root of 1 plus say q squared by g y 1 q. What is this thing? This is true number. So, 8 f r 1 square. So, we have already seen this relationship that is uh, we had at that time we have just briefly mentioned that you can relate the sequent depth ratio with respect to the fruit number and this is how it is derived at. Let me give this as equation number 2. So, that is the sequent depth ratio relation upstream fruit number. Now, let me go through some of the characteristics of jumps. some of the characteristics in the jumps of course we are dealing with the rectangular channels as the heading means it is today's class is mainly on the rectangular channel jumps in rectangular channels itself so the sequent depth relationship as we are aware now y2 by y1 is equal to half into root of 1 plus 
eight f r one square minus one. This I can represent it in another form. Eight f r one square raised to half minus one. Like this also I can just write it. So from this equation, yeah, uh, you can if one depth if the pre jump uh, depth is if it is given to you, you can easily identify what is the post jump depth. There is no need to go and measure it in the means. Uh, if you are aware of the type of flow and all, you can easily now measure the quantities. First one for the among the characteristics is about the energy principles. When you apply the energy principles, uh, let me suggest you here in the flow in flow in rectangular channels while dealing with hydraulic I mean hydraulic germs in rectangular channels and all. Hydraulic germ, you know that it dissipates energy, is not it? It dissipates energy means from the upstream whatever amount of energy is there, some quantity of energy gets lost. So, whatever change in energy is there, at present we are assuming that that change in energy is due to the change in specific energies at the upstream and downstream section the other type of energy losses and all we are not taking into account here fine so we can uh, compare the specific energies at the upstream and downstream first so specific energy at the upstream of the jump we can give this as e1 is equal to the depth of flow plus v 1 squared by 2 g. So, you know what is meant by specific energies. So, that specific energy at the pre jump section we can write it as follows. Just recall the hydraulic jump. So, at this section what is the specific energy that is being measured. Now, at this this is the post jump section what is the specific energy there that also can be suggested at the downstream of jump specific energy e 2 is equal to y 2 plus v 2 squared by 2 g. Just going back into the previous slide, if you recall V 1 the discharge per unit width it was given as q is equal to V 1 into y 1. So, therefore, V 1 is nothing but q by y 1. So, that thing will be substituted here I can write this as y 1 plus q squared by 2 g y 1 square. Similarly, for the upstream portion also we can write the specific energy E 2 now this is equal to y 2 plus q squared by 2 g y 2 square. Therefore, change in energy in two sections. the change in energy in two sections again I am reiterating that the hydraulic jump say so the two sections whichever we are taking into account the reach of that section it is small. So, we are considering that whatever change in energies at those two sections are there it is due to the change in the specific energies at those sections the other type of losses we are not taking into account again because the short uh, the reach of that hydraulic jump is too small. So, uh, uh, coming back into this thing I can write the change in energy del E this is equal to E 1 minus E 2 naturally E 1 is greater than E 2 you know that otherwise the flow means you cannot acc accommodate the quantities or hydraulic jump itself means it is dissipating the energy. 
So, I am just writing the quantities again here q squared by 2 g y 1 squared minus y 2 minus q squared by 2 g y 2 squared like this I can easily write it rearrange the terms. So, this becomes the change in energy del E. Now, this becomes y 1 minus y 2 plus q squared by 2 g into 1 by y 1 squared minus y 2 squared. Again y 1 minus y 2 plus q squared by 2 g y 2 squared minus y 1 squared by y 1 squared y 2 squared. Like this I can write the thing from the equation 1 we have derived today q squared by g is equal to half of y 1 y 2 into y 1 plus y 2. You recall them, right? You just substitute these quantities here. So, you will get an expression for del E now. So, I can write the quantity now del E this is equal to y 1 minus y 2 from here this is y 1 minus y 2 into 1 minus q squared by 2 g y 1 plus y 2 y y 1 squared y 2 squared. So, you can write it in the other form also that is instead of writing y 1 minus y 2 you can write it in terms of y 2 minus y 1 because you naturally know that the hydraulic jump y 2 is the larger depth y 1 is the smaller depth. So, to avoid the negative things and all and also to give a more physical relevance you can write it in terms of y 2 minus y 1. Also you substitute the expression this expression whichever is given to you you substitute them here. So, I can write the quantity del E del E this is nothing but equal to y 2 minus y 1 into y 1 plus y 2 whole square by 4 y 1 y 2 minus 1. Do I need to explain it? You are substituting this entire quantity in q squared by g. So, the q squared by g is equal to half of this quantity. So, here y 2 uh, minus y 1 term is there y 1 plus y 2 y 1 plus y 2 y 1 uh, those things gets multiplied and you are getting the square of those quantity. That is the reason it is coming into picture in this way. So, I can rearrange the quantities again y 2 minus y 1 into y 1 plus y 2 whole square minus 4 y 1 y 2 by 4 y 1 y 2 like this also I can write it. That is your simple cubic expansion of y 2 minus y 1 quantity. So, 1 by 4 y 1 y 2 into y 2 minus y 1 whole cube. So, this is the expression for change in energy. So, let me assign this as equation number 3. This is how you derive the change in energy term. Uh, if you want to express 
energy in terms of relative terms. Uh, you can express, say for example, if I express this quantity now, you can define a ratio del E by E 1. So, this is called relative loss of energy, because you know the upstream section energy, specific energy and what is the energy loss. So, like that the non dimensional form of loss in energy can be expressed. So, it is a relative loss in energy term. If you want to find it in terms of root number that is also quite possible. You know that del E del uh, is now in terms of y 1 and y 2. Similarly, E 1 u it is in terms of y 1. When you, if you find their ratios corresponding ratios, if you incorporate the corresponding relationship y 2 by y 1 is equal to half of 1 plus 8 f r 1 square to the power of half minus 1. If this relationship if it is incorporated in those ratios and all, you will get the relative loss of energy in terms of fruit number. That is also quite useful thing. So, efficiency of a jump. You can find the efficiency of a jump by identifying the ratio upstream specific energy by downstream specific energy. So, in the hydraulic jump, this is upstream quantity, whatever specific energy is there E 1, whatever specific energy is there in the downstream section E 2. So, E 2 by E 1 whatever change is there, whatever what, uh, what is that ratio that is called the efficiency of hyd uh, hydraulic jump. So, you can easily write again as I mentioned it earlier. For example, you know E 2 is equal to E 2 is equal to y 2 plus q squared by 2 g y 2 squared. So, this can be written as you know q squared by g is equal to half of y 1 y 2 into y 1 plus y 2. You inc incorporated incorporate uh, this con uh, relationship here as well. So, I will get a corresponding form 1 by 4 y 2 square into 4 y 2 cube plus y 1 squared y 2 plus y 1 y 2 square. Like this I will get an expression for E 2 in terms of y 1 and y 2. Similarly, E 1 is equal to 1 by 4 y 1 squared into 4 y 1 cube plus y 1 squared y 2 plus y 1 y 2 squared like this you will get. So, their corresponding ratios therefore, E 2 by E 1 you will get the corresponding quantity. 4 y 2 cube plus y 1 squared y 2 plus y 1 y 2 square by 4 y 1 cube plus, plus y 1 squared y 2 plus y 1 y 2 square into y 1 by y 2 whole square. Like this, I will get the corresponding means that efficiency of jump relationship. The efficiency of jump you can obtain it in the particular form. This again as I mentioned earlier, you can express it in terms of fruit number, upstream fruit number, because you know that 
y 2 by y 1 is nothing but equal to half of 1 plus 8 f r 1 square this quantity is rooted minus 1. If this quantity is substituted here, you can easily get the expression in terms of f r 1 square. Just for a simple demonstration, I can show it to you now. E 2 by E 1. For the other quantities, I expect from you to do the uh, expansion and obtain the corresponding relationship and all. Just here also, I will not be uh, deriving it up to the final step. I just I am just showing you how you incorporate the sequent depth ratio in the above efficiency relationship E 2 by E 1 and correspondingly you will get all the terms all the terms in, in that ratio in fruit number quantities. So, the jump efficiency ratio it can be expressed means as I mentioned earlier. Now, the pre, from the previous slide if you guys have gone through this the E 2 by E 1 term I had expressed it in this following relationship. So, here in the for the y 2 term we have just sub, uh, substituted from this particular relationship from this relationship what is y 2 that has been substituted here. Similarly, wherever y 2 is coming in picture this relationship is substituted. Similarly, this y 1 by y 2 whole square that is nothing but the inverse of this quantity right. So, that is also being substituted there. So, like that we are incorporating the terms here and I am getting the corresponding equation in the expanded form. So, here you will see that even these y 1 cube terms, these y 1 it is uniform everywhere and that will also get cancelled off. So, you are getting this efficiency practically in terms of fruit number. So, like that you are able to uh, occur, you are able to derive this efficiency quantities and all. You can arrange means for similarly for all the quantities you can arrange the thing. Next we can suggest is that height next characteristics of the rectangular jump is height of the jump. You can think of height of the jump also. So, you have jump this is pre jump this is post jump depth. So, height of the jump h f or h j whatever let us avoid confusion h j let me write it this is equal to nothing but y 2 minus y 1. It is a simple term, uh, terminology. However, this height of the jump this again can be represented in terms of some standard value standard in the sense for this particular any rectangular channel the specific energy of the upstream that will be the maximum depth means the specific energy it is possible right. So, E 1 and Y 1 are known quantities. So, if the ratio h j by E 1, if this quantity is obtained, then this quantity is called relative height of the jump. This is called relative height of the jump. So, the, this is a more useful value. We will of course, we will see how it is useful means we can just demonstrate them also. Uh, again this quantity relative height of the germ this can be represented in terms of upstream fruit number f r 1. So, I am not deriving that you have already seen it for the efficiency how one can derive it 
this quantity Sim in a similar approach you can derive this quantity also the relative height of the jump it is a non dimensional quantity this is nothing but equal to 1 plus 8 f r 1 square the square root of this quantity minus 3 by f r 1 square plus 2 like this you can obtain the relative height of the jump as well why you are requiring these quantities why such quantities non dimensional quantities are being identified you will see that means it will be quite useful another quantity uh, non dimensional quantity i can suggest is say de the change in energy was already mentioned so this change in energy with respect to the upstream energy this is called the relative energy loss So, you know del E is equal to y 2 minus y 1 whole cube by 4 y 1 y 2 right energy relationship you have already derived that. So, and E 1 this can also be expressed in terms of y 1 and y 2 that we have seen in the previous slide here. E 1 is equal E 2 is equal E 1 is equal to in terms of y 1 and y 2 that is also obtained. Substitute those quantities you will again get this relationship del E by E 1 in terms of fruit number at the upstream section. So, again I am not going to derive it you have already seen the derivation process. So, I will just write the final form 1 plus 8 f r 1 square the square root of this quantity minus 3 whole cube divided by 8 times 2 y f r 1 square 1 plus 8 f r 1 square raised to half minus 1. So, if we have these ratios, these corresponding ratios in terms of the fruit number upstream fruit number, then the criteria uh, suggestion is that the upstream fruit number is the only quantity you require from that you can easily analyze the jump in the rectangular channels. What are the peculiarities of these quantities del E by E 1 as well as H j by E 1. I can just show some two plots here you see here the first one this corresponds to say the x axis is the fruit number and the y axis this is the relative energy loss this is the relative energy loss represented del E by E 1. So, if the fruit number if it is slowly increased from 0 to 20 you can see the curve following the path in the following form right the path is being followed. So, you can see that at very large fruit numbers that is fruit numbers of 20 and all that will yield a considerable energy loss that is del E by E 1 it is very high up to 0.9 or means 85 percentage. So, so that can be easily inferred from these pictures at large fruit numbers energy loss is up to 85 percentage. If you recall in the last class in the strong gems and all you have seen that means it this uh, strong gems were in the regions of very high fruit number uh, numbers up to uh, high upstream fruit numbers there you will see up to 85 percentage of 
energy loss. So you can witness this is being obtained in the following form. The curve we have simply the, this curve has been derived from the relationship del E by E 1 is equal to 1 plus 8 f r 1 square to the power of half minus 3 the whole quantity raised to 3 by 8 times 2 plus f r 1 square 1 plus 8 f r 1 square the root minus 1. So, using this relationship we have developed this particular curve. The second curve, the second curve is related to again fruit number in the x axis and the relative height we have already mentioned that right the relative height h f by e 1 quantity on the x uh, y axis. So, this quantity also again we can suggest it in the following form. You will see that the curve increases suddenly it increases for low it reaches up to a maximum of 0 0.5 around 0 0.504 I think. So, then it reduces it gradually reduces like this this curve. So, the peculiarity of this curve from this curve also you can identify that the maximum relative energy that is the maximum relative height of this gem that is maximum relative height of gem is possible at a fruit number quantity of around. So, this you can infer it, it may be around mean between 0 and 5 that is may be roughly around 3 and all this can be roughly at around 3, 3 or 3 point something. So, this you can easily uh, derive this curve and check them. So, that way we have just seen some of the characteristics of the jumps we can have a brief quiz also today. Uh, unlike the previous quizzes, today in the quiz we have as we have seen the characteristics of the uh, rectangular gems and all like uh, gems in the rectangular channels. I am going to ask some problems, numerical problems. You just need to apply those formulas whichever are there. Even you can just go through the book and just apply those formula and try to get the answer. So, the kiss is as follow. The first question for a rectangular channel, the sequent depth ratio can be expressed in terms of fruit number. Write the expression and explain the terms. This is the first question and it is a very simple you will take hardly 20 seconds I think. The second question, please note that a hydraulic jump is formed in a 4.5 meter rectangular wide channel, okay, 4.5 meter rectangular channel. The channel is carrying a discharge of 18 meter cube per second. The pre jump depth is 0 0.0.6 0 .6 meter. Find A the post jump depth, B energy loss and C relative energy loss. Fine. It is a very simple thing that is we have already seen the relationships. You can just quickly work it out. There is no hurry here, you can just uh, work it out and tell me the answer. Of course, you need to apply it in the field, right? These are some of the field problems. So, the solution for the first question, you know the expression y 2 by y 1, this is equal to half of 1 plus 8 f r 1 square, this quantity is square root minus 1. So, 
y 2 is the secant depth of y 1, f r 1 square f r 1 is the fluid number it is a fluid number and uh, um, all other terms means as, I, as we have asked you to explain the terms, the terms are now explained. Answer for the second Q's, it can be given in the following form. You have been given Q, the discharge Q in the rectangular channel as 18 meter cube per second. Okay, let me just draw the cross section of the rectangular channel with width 4.5 meter. So, you have the width of the rectangular channel as 4.5 meter. Therefore, you can easily compute discharge per unit width. This can be given as 18 by 4.5. This is nothing but 4 meter squared per second. You are also been provided the data pre jump height pre jump height that is y 1 is equal to 0 0.6 meter. This data was also given to you. I hope you can recall what is y 1 this is pre jump height this is post jump height. So, we are requested to find y 2 we are also requested to find energy loss and relative energy loss. How will you find the quantities? You can easily find the fluid number in the pre according to the pre jump depth. So, this can be given as q square g by y 1 q. So, you know small q is 4. So, 4 squared by 9.81 into 0.6 q. This is equal to you can compute it, it is coming as 7 roughly 7.55. You can also compute specific energy at pre jump location. So, I can compute this as E 1, E 1 is nothing but equal to depth plus q squared by 2 g y 1 square. So, using this relationship you will get 0.6 plus 4 squared by 2 times 9.81 into 0.6 squared. So, this is coming as 2.86 by meter. Similarly, uh, for the rectangular channel, you had seen the secant depth ratio y2 by y1. This is equal to half of minus 1 plus root of 1 plus 8 fr1 squared. Substitute this relationship. f r 1 square is 7.55. So, I will get this quantity as 3.4179. Okay. So, you have uh, the pre jump depth as 0 0.6 meter. Therefore, post, ju post jump depth y 2, this will be equal to y 1 into this particular ratio 3.4179. So, this is coming to be about around 2.05 meter. So, therefore, for your post gem the depth is 2.05 meter. Your energy energy loss del E this is given as y 2 minus y 1 whole cube by 4 y 1 y 2. As you have the data of y 1 y 2 substitute them. I am just directly substituting them 
2.5 minus 0.6 whole cube by 4 times 0.6 into 2.05. So, you will get roughly 0 0.6206 meter as the change in energy. You can also compute fluid number in the downstream section. This is given as q squared by g y 2 q. I am not going to further extend the uh, calculations. It is coming to be around 0 0.189. The relative energy loss can also be computed. It is nothing but del E by E 1. You can compute them. You have E 1, you have del E just see what could be that value. That way we are just concluding today's lecture. Next in the next lecture also we will be continuing with the hydraulics gel. So, uh, it is up to you now to prepare thoroughly on all the aspects of this open channel hydraulics or the hydraulics portions for your benefits and all for your curriculum uh, requirements and all. So, with best wishes we will be continuing in the next class also. Thank you.